I'd like to welcome everyone out to the funeral of Gary H. Crosby, who I am as President Steve Burman, I'll be conducting and presiding at the funeral this evening. We uh, I'd like to recognize um, Sister Heather Bruce, who's going to provide the uh, music tonight, and she's provided lovely cradle music for us. We'll begin the service by uh, invocation by Brother Robert Putnam. Father in heaven, how grateful we are to be able to, to be able to be gathered together this evening. In the midst of all of here, we can be together to pray tribute to Gary H. Crosby, a man whose life was well, well lived and well spent. We're grateful for his kindness and his devotion to all of us and for his example. We pray that thy spirit would be with us this night, that we may be comforted and uplifted. We pray that thy spirit would be with those who would speak to us tonight. That they would speak the words that would be a blessing to us. We're thankful now, Father, for all that thou blessed us with. And we offer this prayer of gratitude unto thee. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You have to bear with me with uh, some of the protocols. This is how it is now. Uh, if you've messed up, we're supposed to sanitize before and after everyone on the podium. So, in, in the matter of housekeeping here, um, I guess the first thing is due to the pandemic, um, we're all separated and seated. And uh, if you um, if you need to go to the washroom, it's at the back of the building, and uh, just advise everyone to keep their social distance inside the building. And uh, when the service is over, you can follow the arrows out that way. <clears throat> so, in that in that light, we have a relatively short service this evening as far as funerals go um, and we'll get right into it. Our first speaker tonight is Brother Bill Zanson. Um, Bill's good friend Gary's uh, served together here in the church in many capacities uh, and spent a lot of time together outside that and uh, he will be our first speaker this evening. I uh, went over on the phone and asked if I could do this this evening. My uh, uh, my thought was that first of all, the older I got, the more I find it difficult to uh, to speak in front of groups. And of course, I I wondered what can I say? I was a good friend. Uh, I think. Uh, he considered me a good friend. Um, and of course, uh, you can't tell anything bad about him. Uh, can't lie. So, didn't really know what to say. Uh, however, I thought with the help of my wife, I'd start working with a poem. And uh, it's, it sort of touched my, my heart. We are here to celebrate your life and the measure of its worth and every single life you touched while you were on this earth. 
we wish to pay our last respects. That's why we are all here, to thank you for your friendship and all the memories we hold dear. It's been a privilege to have known you, who we were family, not just friends. And we will carry you in spirit until we meet you once again. And um, I tried to remember so how long I'd known him and where I first met him, and honestly, couldn't. Uh, it's just like I've always known him. Look, very scary. Uh, I thought about the many things that, uh, that we enjoyed doing together. Uh, I'm sure. Everybody here who we know or remember says that Gary uh, had a number of uh, loves in his life. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the first one was movies, but it came, came close. Uh, one thing that I always liked about Gary, uh, I never heard a disparaging remark about his wife. He always spoke of the long with the highest regards, esteem, and uh, always expressed to, to me, really, when it was uh, serious times, that uh, how much that he, he had, I thought that he was awful lucky uh, to have her with him for the life that he had. Uh, he used to talk uh, about uh, the sacrifices that she had made. And uh, we all have ups and downs. And Gary uh, was one of these persons that uh, you got what you saw. He said what he thought. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I always respected about him was, was that. We uh, had great times, uh, a lot of which was connected to going to movies and going to his place for a movie. Uh, it was a great place to go. He had better equipment than the theaters had anyway. And uh, we used to go, and uh, Tom Kennedy and myself, but uh, after I got to know Tom some and, and uh, his other friends uh, would be there. And I remember one night that uh, Actually, not too uh, not too long ago, maybe a year and a half ago, uh, we went over to my bike and uh, watch a movie. And, and that Gary always had a long list of movies. He so, what do you want to watch? I said, I don't we don't know, just pick something. You know? He had always seen them all, some of them two or three times, most of them two or three times. Uh, Anyway, he put on a movie on this uh, with this great movie. Uh, he put it on for about 10 minutes, and both Tom and I also Gary did that off. It, that was a horrible movie. <laughs> and uh, so he picked up another one. And, uh, put a second one on, and we, uh, we watched it for five or 10 minutes. And Tom and I said, oh, God, that's, that's worse than the first one. Uh, so he, he was a little tipped at us. Well, I thought they were good movies. And we both said at the same time, both said at the same time, you've never seen a movie that you said you didn't like? <laughs> he was, uh, one thing about, again, one of the reasons that I called him a friend was that you could say anything. We joked around. Uh, uh, Teased one another quite a bit. Uh, and you never had to worry about Gary taking offense to anything. Uh, he gave as good as he got. We all know, of course, Gary loved his cars. Uh, uh, he loved his electronics. Uh, he had a fabulous record collection. Uh, and he lived his life, as most of us do, uh, one day at a time, uh, with some regrets, maybe a lot of regrets, 
some times he was uh, melancholy. Sometimes, most times, he was pretty up. As he continued to get uh, into his illness further and longer into his illness, one of the things too that uh, I never experienced was with Gary was him feeling sorry in his, for himself. Uh, yeah, he might comment that you know, geez, I had a bad day, or he thought it was a backache, or this or that. But uh, he, he, he was always the same. One of the things that I wanted to say tonight, and I'm thinking maybe Gary's listening. We don't know. But one of the things I wanted to say is that uh, I couldn't separate our friendship for me and our work together in the church or close to the church. And I know Gary told the story many, many times that when it came to actually his conversion, uh, he had had a witness from his grandfather. And he certainly had a lot of respect for his grandfather. And he actually had a visible witness. You know, I don't know if you called it a dream, or vision, or what you want to call it, but it was real. And his grandfather told him, you better quit fooling around and join the church and uh, start worrying about life after. I think one of the comforts that we have in the church is that as Christians, we're one of the few, few churches, uh, maybe the only church that believes that uh, our family relationships continue after this life. And Gary was always comforted by this. When it came right down to it in, in my thoughts of, what am I going to say? What am I going to say about Gary? Uh, that's meaningful. We are here, as we say, to celebrate his life. But really, we're here to say goodbye. Really, we know that in this life, we're not going to see him again. We know in this life that our experience that, that we've had with him have ended. However, when I, as I said, when I tried to think of what can I really say from the heart when it came to our friendship, Roman did ask me to talk about our friendship. Two things I really want to leave you with. First of all, in the poem it says that we're family, not just friends. And I wanted to say thank you uh, to the Lord, also to, to Florence, Harvey, Kaylee, Krista, and to Trevor, because I think we celebrated more family birthdays, uh, anniversaries with your family than we did with either one of our own. And I'm certain going to miss that. I'm certain to miss that. The other thing I wanted to say when it came to Gary and our friendship, most people have ups and downs in this life. I think that I've had more ups and downs than most. Uh, I maybe seem to be that person, kind of person. I get really excited and do things very impulsively. And I get mad at myself or get sad and 
restrictions we have right now is that we cannot have singing. So we recorded a soloist um, who's right here with us and she doesn't feel the need to lip sync so, but we do have a, a nice video of her and we'll have that now. Thank you. 
our next speaker will be Brother Ken Rogan. After which I will give closing remarks. When the Lord contacted me about speaking, I felt very honored and very privileged to be able to speak here. She asked me to mention a few things. First of all, so I'll make it all perfectly clear, Gary was not attacked by terrorists when he got off the plane. The plane did not blow up. He was not killed on the side of the road. Like the man going to Damascus. He, in fact, died with bacterial spinal meningitis. That's what he died from. That's the hard part. Gary is still one of my best friends. Has been for many years and always will be. But Vaughn asked me to share a few stories, which I do a few. I won't, they won't take that long to tell. But Gary enjoyed movies, as we all know. But Gary, some people can watch movies and enjoy it. Gary got into a movie. The movie became his entire surroundings. He was very intense when it came to movies. So Jeff Rodenizer, another good friend of, of uh, Gary's, we both served here in the patrol committee for a few years together. Anyway, we decided to go to see a Terminator. Anybody familiar with that movie? You know how it ends? The very end? You know the robot makes that last little grass out to get you? That robot made the grass. Jeff took and grabbed Gary's leg. Gary stood up. Scream like a girl and said, if you ever do that again, I'll kill you. <laughs> and Jeff and I, we did the natural thing. We laughed and we laughed and we laughed. And Gary said, I can never come back to the theater again. I can never do it. I can never do it. He was so embarrassed. And we thought it was so funny. That was Gary, though. Gary never took anything halfway. He, he lived, he loved the movies. In fact, he loved movies so much. It was a trick film, I can't remember the name of now. He wanted to go see. We were running a little bit late, and Jeff and I were hungry, as we always are. So we said, Well, we'll just pick up some Chinese food. We'll go to the theater. Of course, Gary, you can't eat Chinese theater out here. They'll smell it. They, but we won't know who it was. So we started with that, watched the movie. <laughs> the Chinese food. Want some more? It wasn't nice. I don't know, I can't see. Where's the soy sauce? I don't know. Shh, shh, shh. Of course, Gary's like, shh, shh, quiet, quiet, quiet. You guys are killing me. <laughs> so we had dinner at the kitchen last night. One of the best I ever had. It was great. It was so good, I can't even remember what the movie was. <laughs> but Gary wasn't easy to bring into church. One of his points, he said, was like, look. He loved his Roman Coke. He had a good Nova Scotia. He loved Roman Coke. And he said, if you guys can get something that tastes as good as a real Roman Coke, I'll join the church. Challenge up to Jeff. Jeff spent three weeks with a bottle of extra And I don't know how many bottles of Coke. But it took a while, but he did get it. Nope, that's it. So off we go. Here we go, Gary. We got a drink for you. It's a rum and coke. Here it goes. Dang. I'll get you in the church now. <laughs> we were quite happy about that. <clears throat> you notice the pictures. One picture shows Gary in a bathrobe. That bathrobe was like a second skin to Gary when he was at home. He had the back of wore up. Rubbed up against the kitchen door and began itch. Like this, back and forth and back. 
You can see there were holes coming in the back of the bathroom. That's why the preacher was always in the front of the bathroom, never in the back. It was all wired. Trevor, your love of video games, you come quite honestly by it. Gary, when he got through watching movies, would play video games. I don't know how many times we would go and visit my, my wife and I and, and uh, <clears throat> Jeff and Sue would go and visit your friend, my, my, your mom and dad. The girls all stayed upstairs and we went downstairs and we played video games. I sucked at video games. I couldn't play. I'd be told, like, just sit over there. Okay, we'll play for you. Okay, that made me happy. But they would play video games. This one night we did get the girls to come down. We started playing a little game called Loopy. Loopy is a little boy playing with goes, It's like that, up and down. But you had to get it off the ground. And then you had to go through loops. And the more loops you went, the higher it scored. We played Loopy until we were Loopy. We played it for over, over two hours, had been two hours. I was getting some of my eyes spinning folks and <laughs> Playing Loopy. <clears throat> Gary was the first one among us to have a movie channel, as Brother Bizantin said. Gary would watch movies over and over. He got his money's worth out of a movie channel. But the problem with the movie channel was you couldn't pick what movie you wanted to watch. They just came on, right? So we would be over there visiting, and Gary said, You want to watch this movie? Yeah, okay, we'll watch it. Well, it's not on until 5 till 4 30. This would be like new at midnight. <laughs> what were we going to do for 4.30? Well, we'll play video games. And that's what we did at 4.30. Then we'd watch the movie, whichever it happened to be. <clears throat> the other thing we used to do with Gary, like, Gary was a solid guy. He was so much fun, though, because he was at his best when he was embarrassed. Now, Gary thought himself as a bit of a Kind of a known person, after all. Yeah, after all, he was the, the uh, let's say, the mechanic, uh, shop manager there for, for Nissan. He was, he was well known. He was a well liked guy. He made it there. But nobody knew the Gary that drove down Queen Street, his two buddies popped the cap off Texas Select, took a dig, 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 throw the cap out the window. And one night a can broke by accident. Well, you're literally in the streets of Toronto with Texas Select. Anybody Texas Select says? It's a near beer. You could drink a case of it and not even feel bad other than having drink a case of beer. beer. But uh, Texas Select. Yeah. But he liked his Chinese food. King Lamb was his lamb of choice, right? Before the King Lamb. Uh, we liked the Chow family ourselves. So it's one night, Rotenizers. Judy and I, and Gary was one of the ones for child family. Now, if you didn't know, Jeff ran Diet Center, which was a weight loss place. You could go and lose weight and keep track of it. So we're at the child family, the big table, both the lazy Susan and I, which we always found a little bit too fast, and we always try to catch the sauce that flew off the edges before it tried to hit something. And Jeff decides, he starts going around the room. They supposed to all the ladies that look like they're a little heavy. Here's my card. Here's my card. Jeff said, Stop that. Stop that, Jeff. No, you can't do that. That's the place of business. Just, yeah, it's my business. <laughs> he starts passing out cards. I don't know how much he drummed up out of that little bit, out of that evening, but he passed out a lot of cards. The other thing we used to do, we used to gather at our place for Mexican food. Back in those days, there weren't a lot of Mexican restaurants other than the Broncos. And uh, Gary quite liked it, actually. And I was honored this by saying, you know, you guys are the only place that I would eat the food from. Because you're clean. Little did you know, Vlog, you should never watch me cook. <laughs> but we've had Mexican food at our place. The other thing about Gary, Gary is car. Talk about cars. Gary's car was immaculate. My car was clean. 
Gary's car was a magnet. You did there was there was any, any piece of dust or dirt, there land his car. Wow, that was it. Inside the car was vacuumed very much as they every day. Polished, had a turtle wax all over. He had a final cleaner. The car smelled like him a showroom. As far as Gary's concerned, that because it was a demonstrator. He would demonstrate to people how clean you could keep your car. It's great. Now, Gary loved to cook. Steak was one of his favorite meals. And a barbecue steak, he used to do really, really well. We arrived one day, Judy, myself, and Jeff, Sue, and Jeff, and we we're going to have steak that day. Gary's out there, he's barbecuing his steak. For me, the steak goes down off the barbecue. Right here. One hour later, he's still teasing this thing, poking it like a cat in the mouth. Meanwhile, Jeff would be hungry. That dumb man, Jeff? Oh, almost not. I don't know. I think he shut the fire off at some point and just was putting it on to keep us at bay. That's what his plan was. One evening we were down in the basement. Now Gary had a set of swords. They got somewhere. They were ceremonial swords from uh, RMC, I believe. So, got out of the sword fight, man. Got sword, that was over. Now, Jeff and I had practiced this for quite a while. And Gary was always concerned. You guys can't, you're going to hurt yourself. Somebody's going to get, somebody's gonna, there's going to be a mess. I just know it. So, here's Gary and I. Got, I'd rather, Jeff and I. Jeff goes, ha, like that, right through here. I go, ah, gee, that really hurt. Oh, and I collapsed the floor. Gary thought that Jeff could kill me. No, no, oh, look at the, but he's torn between saving my life and keeping blood off the floor. <laughs> he didn't know what to do because he no longer had a fit. The floor had to be blood for Well, we got over that one. The last story I want to talk about Gary. Gary is a great person, a great friend. Uh, Gary did not believe in UFOs. Just so you know, I myself, I'm not so sure. I don't know. But Gary tells a story of coming back from the dance in Malagash. Everybody remembers the Malagash dance hall? It was a room about half the size of there and there. Maybe 10 by 15, that was about it. We had 55 people in there. I want to give us a round. So, anyway, Gary was on his way back to Toronto. Now, there's a legend, local legend, about a monster, a big snake like thing. He comes across the road every now and again, just past the state road, everybody knows where that's at, and he crawls across the road, either going to the strait or into the swamp. Gary swore up and down. He'd seen that snake. He saw the monster of Malagash. And you can never dissuade him. He knew that he saw the monster of Malagash. I myself often wondered, is there a touch of redneck in me? We'd ask Gary, okay, Gary, you saw the monster. Yeah. But just how many beers did you have before you saw the monster? No, no, I saw it, I saw it. Okay, Gary, just, just wondering. Just just trying to be clear that you saw the monster. So, so we both had sworn to Jeff Jones. We believe that Gary Rodney saw the monster on that edge. <laughs> Gary, like I said, is a great friend. Gary's spirit is still with us. It'll always be in my heart. Jeff and I had a few stories and a few tears when we talked about Gary. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, here he would love this, right? Here he goes. He's got a bunch of Mormons sitting in a room all wearing masks. I always knew you guys were a bunch of bandits. That's what he sells. Thank you very, very much. And I leave these thoughts and very memory in Jesus' name. Amen.
Sister Crosby asked me to give a few closing remarks, and I guess that worked out pretty good. We can leave the serious stuff in between the silly stuff. So, it's uh, interesting in this church, we are lay ministry, a lot of people here are members, but we're those in our, we're lay ministry, so I'm the branch president, um, but you know, I'm just a guy who goes to the church as well, and all those stories that my dad just told happened when I was little, so I didn't see any of that stuff. Here's what I thought of Brother Crosby when I was little. So, he wasn't a member of our church back then, and I remember him as the, the guy that he had a, you know, he had a real nice car, you know, a rum and coke with a, with a, with a nice cube in it, <laughs> you know, and, and he was a pretty serious guy. I thought he was a real serious guy. I, mean, I guess I didn't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm the same age as Trevor. And so when we were growing up, that's what I thought. And... Uh, Anyway, a few years later, I was a student at the Agricultural College, and uh, I was invited over one Sunday for General Conference. And the, the church broadcast General Conference on satellite, just why we had this great big goofy satellite dish outside the church still, from the museum. <laughs> but um, it was somehow, the Crosby's had it through electronic means, I guess, at their house, cable or satellite or something. So uh, I came over there, and Trevor and Sister Crosby themselves, being good church members, uh, probably fell asleep <laughs> watching it. And Gary was not a member of the church, and kind of kind of looked at sideways at all this stuff a little bit, not not hostile, but kind of you know, it's a little bit standoffish. And we we kind of opened my eye and saw Sister Crosby. She said. He was on the edge of the seat, listening, listening. And I think once he saw that we didn't notice him, kind of, just, what, right, whatever. The story that Dad just told about uh, the rum and coke um, must not have been that good, because that must have been in about 1985, and when Gary joined the church, 2001, took another 16 years or something to make that transition. Um, so this was a, a big deal. Um, people don't, you might, you might be tricked into, into getting baptized and not knowing, uh, but if you remember, if your wife is an active member of this church, you know exactly what it, what it entails and what, what, uh, what's going to come along with it. So I know it, was, it represented a real big change in his lifestyle. Um, and... Uh, he told me many times, and like Brother Bizanson said, he was a, a, a great guy to talk to because you could talk about yourself um, a lot, as much as you wanted, and he could tell you lots of things, and you knew he wasn't about to go and blab around to everybody. He was a good guy to listen. And um, we were talking to him, and he, would always, he always felt so much that he was unworthy of things. And I would say, why, why do you feel that way? I, I, I don't understand. And you would just say, well, you know, just, you know, like it could be better. And, 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 I, and I would always say, you're fine. Like, you're fine. Don't, don't judge yourself harshly because um, that's the whole point of uh, the Christian faith is basically is repentance. And that's universal, I think, to all denominations. Um, and what happened in the past is important because it made you who you are today, but it's not holding you down in any, way, in any respect. And so uh, I talked a lot about things like that. And, you know, the story about watching General Conference, I guess that would have been 1997. <clears throat> 1998, around that time, and uh, in 2012, we moved back to Toronto, and we uh, we had just got into our house, and but we were living in Village Court in Bible Hill, in an apartment, and we had just got into the apartment, and there was a telephone, a landline telephone, the guy came and hooked it up, and the same day, it rang. 
with Ryan. How are you doing? Well, um, just seeing how you are, and, he, and he, I think he had written down a list. Now, have you got your stuff moved in yet? No, but some of it's coming on a shipment later. Okay, we're going to get some people there to do that. We'll lift it up the stairs. And, you know, have you got this yet? Have you got one of these yet? Have you got one yet? And, and that um, is how Gary operates within this church. Uh, like Bill said, uh, we have to also mourn the loss of many trees that were produced out of that printer. <laughs> I had so many stacks of paper, uh, information, and if you ever wanted a secretary, served as my executive secretary, kept everything in order, had everything figured out, Terry said to me, there hasn't been any ministering uh, entered into the system. Uh, they called him up and said, well, it actually was Gary's job. <laughs> now he's not doing it. It's not getting done. So, uh, you know, he was a diligent servant of the Lord in, in the things that not everybody else loves to do. He had all of the things organized. He had the, the lists. And, you know, I, I have a list from Gary that tells me who in the branch owns a generator. Um, you know, everything. Everything. The phone trees. All, all this organization. Um, and he was just absolutely uh, very, very handy at that kind of thing. And, uh, and also, and I'm surprised nobody's mentioned this, uh, I'll tell you, last night Trevor and I uh, hit this uh, memory stick, and I said, oh, what's this? He said, oh, I just copied this off Dad's uh, tablet. And what do you think was on it? It's not a trick question. A lot of movies. <laughs> and all these pictures that we're seeing here. Um, and poems. So anyone that knew Gary would like to write poetry, um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, no, I guess it's not amazing, maybe, but I can't write poems. It's not something I'm gifted to do. And, and Gary had a lot of uh, a lot of a, a talent for that. And I think it helped him express some of the feelings that he had that he couldn't put into words otherwise. He really liked to, um, you know, like to do things like that, and also write fun poems that uh, brought up, you know, funny things or goofy things. Um, but yeah, there's a we. We, we said maybe we should be putting some of the poems up here, but we figured it was too, uh, the screen was, wasn't quite big enough for everybody to see it. Um, and that was definitely a big part of, a big part of um, I think, a big part of what he, a part of, some, part of him that maybe a lot of people here wouldn't have known about. Um, very last time I had a long chat with, with, with Gary was uh, after he had sold his home, there was a condition that the septic be inspected and it turned out it needed to be replaced. So I came over and uh, and I knew I was going to be there all afternoon because it was one of those afternoons that I didn't want to go back to the office and he knew that and I walked in, there's a little table in the kitchen there and uh, I was just there to tell him, I think, the length and width of the septic field that I had calculated. And, uh, and he sat down, and I sat down there. And uh, as soon as I sat down, tumbler and a thing of uh, eggnog. Did you know that you can freeze eggnog? And it lasts almost all year long? Well, Gary Crosby knew that, and he found out from Scott's Burn Dairy, because he knew someone there, that that was totally okay, and he, some food scientist told him that that was just fine. So yes, yeah, so you can have, have eggnog all year long. So he came out, and it's this, you know, I was having my February eggnog, or whatever it was. And we drank, I think, the whole two liters of it, just about. Mary Beth makes me water it down with milk, <laughs> but I was having a straight eggnog. And so uh, we, were, we were talking, we were drinking eggnog, and he said, um, he said, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to be around. And I thought, well, I don't want to. Yeah, don't, don't talk like that. But he said, no, I just, I don't know. Um, I, 
still not. He said, I'm just not well. And I, you know, and I'm going to start saying that because I, I, I know, and I'm not saying that like I know, no, but I actually know because he told me that, you know, he was preparing himself for the next life. Um, I don't know that we really liked how that transition happened, um, but he was preparing himself. And my heavens, he certainly uh, cataloged a lot of family history. Um, there was a lot of things that happened. I mean, there's a lot of things that happened. And I think as much as it's been painful, it's also been a blessing. Um, and I just want to finish off by sharing my testimony. We talked a little bit today about the eternal nature of families. That's something we believe in the church. Um, but we, we believe in repentance and the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ and to change people. And I can't think of anything better to think about than Brother Crosby and how he changed for the better, still see the same. He's still the same person that we knew in Mark. And I know that if we take the time today as we leave, it's such an awkward time. I'm so sorry that we have to have these restrictions. It's not super nice looking out at this crowd. I'm just glad I could see some person's face. <laughs> But anyway, um, when you go, maybe you can have a chat in the, in the parking lot. But I'm just so glad to be able to be here today and be part of this. And I know that our Heavenly Father loves us. And I know that each and every one of us, whether we're members of this church or that church or agnostic or atheist or whatever, have a little piece of the Savior Jesus Christ in us, in the sense that we can reflect on some of the really good things that uh, we, we know in other people's lives and be able to take that and bring it out. And I just want to leave that with you in Jesus' name. And we will now uh, listen to a piece of music on the electronic organ with no singing. After that, the benediction will be offered by Brother Nelson. Um, and I'll just remind everybody uh, after the service if they can make their way out in a socially distant manner and it's not too dark out and there's parking lot lights, so I'll chat or stuff like that.
for some of the reason, the way you feel. We're thankful for the great love and friendship you have for all of us. Father, we ask a special blessing at this time for all of us, especially as family. Might be able to feel the peace that he is now experiencing. Lead to earthly concerns and earthly pains. That we might all know and understand that the Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, infinitely more forgiving, patient, and kind than we in our this earthly state can imagine. Let that spirit be with us all, especially as family. That they be comforted by the Holy Ghost. And that they might feel that peace through the trials and loneliness and the moments of despair that are a natural part of grieving. That joy is to be safe. Let that spirit be with us and hope we do, especially through these difficult times, as we must and remember you. We give thee thanks, Father. Ask for these blessings and do it in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you. 